Hey guys, it's John Sparkman here, back in the studio, and today we are answering questions which have been put towards me for the past two years. You guys want to see MagMod modifiers on a flash with a model. So today we have Rosa, and we're going to test out each of the most popular versions of the MagMod accessories. So we're going to start with the basic kit. We have a grid here. This is a Mag grid, a gel. Inside that is a one half CTO gel, a Mag sphere, and a Mag bounce. We're going to start with a complete bare bulb situation so on the flash there's absolutely nothing there straight into the camera as you would do nice and we're seeing straight away that there's incredibly hard shadows very direct line of sight between where the flash is coming out just here it's going across and in the background we're creating these very dramatic dark shadows and what is illuminated so maybe above or the the left hand side of the model's uh, face is very very bright in comparison we don't particularly like this ratio of dark to light with uh, modeling or portraits or any kind of shot in the studio really so we need to either enlarge that light source soften it up or control it a little bit so i think we'll start with the most popular one which is the sphere now the sphere just attaches to these magnetic mounts at the front of the flash you don't have to do anything else to it. It just connects and that's it. It's nice and sturdy. It's collapsible. Because of its sphere shape, it's going to direct light forwards, but also sideways and up. And it's going to fill in some of that uh, darker area. So it's going to give a larger light source in comparison. It's going to be bouncing across the ceiling and the floor. And this should give a much more instantly appealing image. So we may see a drop off in light output through this. And we have, so we're just going to correct for that one by just dropping the aperture in camera by a few stops. Try that again. That's perfect. And if we actually, uh, Rosa, could you take a step forwards? Is that all right? We're just going to get a bit of separation between you and the background. That should be enough. And the further the model is away from the background, the, uh, the less harsh the shadows are there because the light has started to dissipate. So we'll take this shot. And again, love it, yep. That's perfect. And Rosa, could I ask you just aim your face or where your nose is a bit more towards the light, if that's okay? And we'll go again. Yeah, amazing, amazing. And it really pays to work with a professional model at this point. So you don't have to worry about the posing at all. You just take it from someone who's been doing it for years. Because the mag mods are completely stackable, because it's just a series of magnets, I'm going to modify what we already have with that sphere there, but I'm going to add a grid right behind it. So adding the grid, it doesn't make the lighting more powerful, it doesn't do anything like that. In fact, it's probably going to take some of the light away because it's getting intercepted by that black hexagon shape. But what it is going to do, it's going to just direct the light a bit more forwards before it spreads out. Now I should get a very similar shot to what I had before but it's going to be a bit more of a, a, a localized soft area. So a bit like a soft uh, soft box, a small soft box. So we've lost so much light from that. I need to adjust my camera all the way down. That's fine. That's perfect. And so I've gone all the way down to F2.8 now. And it's providing a really small pool of light uh, just on the model. So we don't get any spill. We don't have anything lit up on either side. In a studio where it's a very thin frame, so it's literally the model and nothing else, you may not need that. But if you're, say, out as a wedding photographer or something, you don't want to illuminate things left and right. So that's a really good method to help. For this next one, we are going to do something slightly different. Uh, this is going to be using the Mag Bounce. Now it actually requires my flash to point up completely. So we're going to do the very best we can here by pointing it directly up into the sky. Take these off. Now the mag bounce is like a scoop. So the light goes in here, then it bounces against the top of this and straight forward. This is a great way of getting a small light source, like a small flash gun, really big, really fast. Think like um, studio umbrellas, that's how they work. So it's going to bounce upwards and we should get a huge pool of light. The bigger the light source, the softer it's going to be in comparison. So we'll see how this goes by just turning up the aperture real quick. Perfect. 
perfect and we'll just do a couple like this that's amazing and the real good thing about using a lighting modifier like the bounce is that the model can be anywhere you can move around as well because the light source now is really big uh, it's spreading everywhere a bit like the sphere would but this is a non-directional or it's one that has to be bounced in order for it to actually interact really good light source so let's get a couple of these so we can really see the difference that these modifiers can make just to a real simple one lighting setup. Uh, we've gone a long way since just having bare bones, so no modifiers on the front. The spheres are really good for directional pools of light. The bounce is really good if you just want to cover huge areas in one go. I'd like to thank you for sticking around and bearing with me as it's been a long break since my last video was uploaded. If you like this kind of content, stick around and subscribe. I plan on making much more of this in the future. Thanks.